And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And before we go into prayer and get into the word, I'm just going to share this real quick. There are so many different areas um, just within this chapter five that we can cover. One of the first things I want to point out is that we cannot be under the law and under grace at the same time. And the word clearly tells us here that we have freedom in Christ. We have a liberty in Christ. But then it goes on and it talks about us not using that freedom in Christ to, um, for an occasion to our flesh. Just because we have free will, just because we have a choice to make every day about um, our life, our freedom in Christ, being able to make choices about what we do because we're not robots. It doesn't mean that, hey, I'm under grace so I can just continue to sin and continue to do things that's pleasing to my flesh because we know that whenever we're doing things, whether it's eating, whether it's listening to music, whether it's working, going after an education, it can be going after a certain job. It can even be in a relationship. When we're doing things that's only to please our flesh, then we know that that automatically puts us against God. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that God has in his will for us that will be pleasing to our flesh. But when our number one priority is to please our flesh, then that puts us against God because then, then that leads into the works of the flesh, which where uh, the idolatry is. Anything that we put before God becomes idolatry. And when we put our own will above God's will, and that's just one of the other areas that this talks about, when we put our own will above God's will, that becomes idolatry because then the way we feel, our plans, our desires, all of that becomes more important than God's will for us. And we don't want to do that. And then it goes on at the end of this um, passage of scripture to talk about the fruit of the spirit. And I just want to end there. And, you know, last week I stood before you all and talked about 
us examining ourselves against the word. And I'm going to end on that same note this morning for whatever reason, you know, the Lord has me to say that again. When we examine ourselves, we have to do it against the word of God. And Galatians chapter five, where it talks about the fruit of the spirit or the character of God, the, the character that we should have as believers, we should check ourselves against that. And one of the areas that particularly stick out to me is temperance because sometimes, and I know I've done this in the past and I hear people say, I just can't help myself. Oh, I just have to have this, or I just have to do this. I just can't seem to help it, whether it's gossip. And again, it can be eating. It can be, um, being in a relationship. It can be a sexual desire, all these things. Um, and, and sometimes we say, Oh, I can't help myself. But the word of God makes it very clear that one of the fruit of the spirit is temperance. And that talks about self-control, doing things in um, modesty, that we don't have to overdo it. And if that's an area that we struggle in, whatever it might be, it could be even spending too much time on the Internet. Because a lot of times and uh, we can start doing things and end up spending four, five, six, seven, eight hours just online, really just wasting time. And we have to. Um, learn to measure ourselves against the word of God. And if the word of God says that one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is temperance and um, God makes it very clear over in Corinthians that, you know, he makes a way of escape for us whenever there is temptation. So we have to learn how to believe the word of God over our flesh. Our flesh may have a problem with um, letting go of certain things that's not really good for us. Or in our flesh, we may have a problem with cutting off a timeline or cutting people out of our life. But the word makes it clear that greater is he that's inside of me than he that's in the world. And if we would just rely on God for strength, and if we would just believe God's word and stand on his word and not allow our flesh to overtake that spirit man, then we can operate in um, temperance. We can operate according to uh, what the word says and that the uh, fruit, the fruits of the spirit and the, and the character of God can be evident in our life. Amen. Um, well, let's just uh, close our eyes and um, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to celebrate you, Lord, to celebrate your word, Lord, to be in your presence, God, to um, be led by the spirit this morning. We thank you so much, Lord, for um, what you've done for us just through this week, God. You've allowed us um, traveling grace as we've traveled the highways, Lord. You've allowed us to be protected from um, the different storms that we've faced recently, Lord. We thank you so much for protecting us in our homes. And dear God, as we come before you this morning, we ask that you will forgive us for anything that we've done wrong, God, for we realize that we fall short day in and day out. Sometimes it's the things that we do or things that we simply fail to do um, that you've commissioned us to do, God. But we realize, Lord, today is a brand new day, God. We thank you for brand new mercies, oh God, and we come before you, Lord, willing to be used by you, Lord, God, humbling ourselves before you, saying, Lord, we need you. God, we can't do anything without you today, Lord. And we just ask, God, that you would have your way, that you would be in control, that you would speak through your messenger this morning, oh God, and that you would help us, Lord, to receive what it is you have to say. And not only today, God, but when we leave this sanctuary, God, when we're no longer congregating together with other saints, God, in our quiet time, Lord God, let your words saturate our mind and our heart and our spirit, God, so that when situations come up in life, God, we can apply your word, that we can remember what it is you've told us to do, Lord God, that we can operate according to your spirit and according to your word. And God, I pray that as we proclaim to be your servants and as we proclaim, proclaim, Lord, that you have changed our life, God, that it will be evident not only to us, God, but to those who are watching from the outside. I pray, Heavenly Father, if we never get to open up our mouth and witness to some of those that are around us, God, that they would be able to look at our life, Lord, that they will be able to hear our conversation, God, that they will be able to see our attitude and know that there is something different about us, God, knowing that we don't fit in with this world, but that we are conforming to your ways, Lord God, and that it's your Holy Spirit working through us that allow us to be different. We praise you and we thank you so much, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.